All right, today we're going to look at the epsilon delta definition of a limit. This is going to be a little bit confusing, so I'll illustrate an example, give you the definition, give you a graphical drawing, and then we'll do an example to hopefully get your mind around what exactly is going on in this situation, because it's not necessarily the easiest thing to understand. So, our definition starts out the same. We say the limit as x approaches a of our function f of x is equal to l if for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that the distance between x and our point a is less than delta, then the distance between our function and our limit is less than some number epsilon. And this is an if statement. So if the first part is true, then the second part is definitely true. All right, so let's break apart some of these symbols. This upside down A means that for all, and this backwards E means there exists, which means there is at least one delta. I know you might not have seen this in an introductory calculus course, but these are good symbols to know because it sh shortens up these definitions by a lot when you can just sacrifice words for symbols. All right, so graphically, what does this mean? This means if we have some function uh, let's do a function like this, and we pick a point A, and we know that the limit is right here. So we're going to pick a, fun a limit that we know, because we know this exists. What we're saying is if we take two points around it, so we're going to call this A plus delta, and the same distance here is A minus delta, so this distance here and this distance here is the same, then if this is our range, of our point A, then we know that the limit is going to be between two points L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. So essentially what it's saying is that if A is somewhere in this distance, then the limit is somewhere in this distance here. And it kind of makes sense. You kind of understand what's going on. It's going to be somewhere in this box. You don't exactly know where, but as long as it's there, then the limit exists. If it's not there, then the limit doesn't exist. And I think that that should make good enough sense for the example coming up. Okay, so you're going to use this to prove that the limit as x approaches 3 of, let's take 4x minus 5, is equal to 7. And you're saying, now how do I figure out how to take this graph and this definition and prove a limit when I could easily just plug 3 into x there and solve it and you'd be done? Well, this is where I'm here for because this example can be very challenging. So we're going to start out by filling in the spots in our definition. So we know that if 0 is less than x minus a, which happens to be 3, is less than some number delta, then our function 4x minus 5 minus our limit 7 is less than some number epsilon. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to work with this number here to get it equal to that there, because we are going to guess a delta. So we're guessing a delta. And if we guess a delta, then we can pick that delta, and we can see if we can get it out to become an epsilon later. And if it does, then we know that the limit exists and we have our proof. Okay, so this also means that 4x minus 12 is less than epsilon. We can factor out a 4. x minus 3 is less than epsilon, and we can divide by 4. So this is less than epsilon over 4. So now we know that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta, and the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick delta equal to epsilon over 4. Okay, so that is one half of the problem. Second half, once you have your delta, is very simple. Now we're going to make sure it works. So make sure delta works. Okay, so we're going to start with the right side again. So we're going to say 4x minus 12 
is equal to 4 times x minus 3. And what do we know about x minus 3? We know that x minus 3 is less than or equal to, actually not less than or equal to, just x minus 3 is less than delta. Okay, so x minus 3 is less than delta. So what we'll do is then we know that it's less than 4 times delta because if x minus 3 is less than delta then 4 times x minus 3 is less than 4 times delta. But what did we pick delta to be? We picked it to be epsilon over 4. So this is equal to 4 times epsilon over 4 which is equal to epsilon. So we know it worked because by picking delta equals epsilon over 4 we got epsilon out of it. So now because of that, we have proven that this statement is true because we picked a delta here and we got an epsilon out there. So because we picked those two numbers and it came out to be true, thus the proof is complete. So proof complete. And that would be a full six of six marks on your question if you had it. So I'm going to give you guys one more question before... Uh, I leave, let me find a good one here, and we'll try it together. Alright, let us try... I like this one. This one might be a little bit tricky. Okay, so here's your question. Prove that the limit as x approaches 1 of 2 plus 4x divided by 3 is equal to 2. Alright, so pause the video, take some time to do it and I'll show you how to do it when we come back. All right, let's tackle this problem. So let's set it up. We know that x minus a is greater than zero, which is x minus one, which is less than our number delta. And we know that our function minus our limit is less than the number epsilon. So we have, I'm gonna break this into fractions, two thirds plus four thirds x minus 2, which I am actually going to make 6 thirds, just to make it easier for you guys to see what's going on algebraically, is less than epsilon. Okay, so we want to somehow make that that. Okay, so let's subtract. So negative 4 thirds plus 4 thirds x is less than epsilon. Of course, these are absolute values. So if we just take out 4 thirds, then that's x minus 1 is less than epsilon. So we know that x minus 1 is going to be less than, we're going to divide by 4 thirds on both sides, so that is 3 epsilon over 4. And my 3s and epsilons look very similar, so I'm terribly sorry for this example. I'll try to do something about that now. So we've gone one direction, we've done step one. We've picked a delta, and we're going to pick delta is equal to 3 epsilon over 4. I'll use this epsilon. It's used in set notation, but it'll do better for differentiating my writing in this example. Okay, so now in step two, we want to start with the same thing we started with before. So we know that the absolute value of 4 thirds x minus 4 thirds is less than epsilon. Actually, we're not even going to put epsilon there. We know that's less than 4 thirds times x minus 1, which we know is going to be less than, well, what was our delta? That is 4 thirds times delta, because of the same way we did it before. And this is going to be equal to 4 thirds times 3 epsilon over 4, which is equal to epsilon. And thus we have proven that the limit as x approaches 1 of 2 plus 4x over 3 is equal to 2. And hopefully you guys understand how to do these problems by now. If you don't, please leave a comment and I will do another video because these problems are fun and this is crucial in your analysis course. And hopefully beyond in further mathematics, you will be able to pick this up much faster, especially because if this is a Calculus 1 course and you're doing this in your Calc 1 course, this is coming out of left field, and 
honestly, this is probably going to be your hardest thing to do in the course in probably the next month. So, hopefully you understood that. If not, I'll make another video.